The Metal Mentality Podcast is brought to you in partnership with AM300 and The Phoenix Project. For more information on both, check out am300.com slash metal. It's time for you to be the you that you know you can be and to find your metal. My name is Preston Yule, and I'm the host of the Metal Mentality Podcast. I'm a husband, a father, and American soldier. What is metal? It's your strength of character that you rely on to endure hardship. It's your grit. Together, we'll learn from some dedicated, passionate, metal-minded individuals who define themselves by their grit and their graduation from suffering. Be metal. Stay metal. Welcome to the show today, everyone. I am your host, Preston Yule. Today, I'm joined by a mother of three, a biology teacher by day, who ventured into being a stay-at-home mom and started her own skincare business. She is a personal development coach and an incredible human being. Please welcome to the show today, Carrie Sherman. Carrie, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. So I, it's kind of funny how... Uh, you ended up coming on here and how I ended up finding you and, and deciding that I need to have you on the show. So <laughs> I'll, I'll tell the audience a little bit about it. I was on Instagram late one night when I should have been sleeping and uh, somehow I, I came across a post of yours and I clicked on your profile and I looked at all your content and it said, uh, it, um, you had some great content. I loved it. Thank and I was, you. Like, I was commenting on it. I was like, this stuff is awesome. And then I looked up at your bio and it said that you were a, a it said personal, personal growth enthusiast. Yeah. And I looked at it, I was like, no, I, I'm a, and that there's a difference between an enthusiast and, and something else. So like, I'm a huge basketball fan, like the Utah jazz, like I'm a fanatic, right? We call them fans. Like I'm an enthusiast, everything that happens, I'm enthusiastic about. And I looked at it, but I'm not out there telling people how to play basketball and how to be better right. at basketball. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, go jazz. Yeah. And then I'm yelling at the refs from home because they made a bad call because they can hear me. They just, not everybody. Yeah, right. it's, it's a special <laughs> super, it's a super talent that I have. I, I can yell at the refs through the TV. But, and so I saw that. I was like, no, no, she's a coach. And so I sent you a message and that's something I've never done before. And I sent, I was like, you're not an enthusiast. You're a coach. Like if you're going to label yourself, give yourself a better label. And, uh, and I sent that and I was like, oh crap, what did I just do? I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not that forward. And then we developed a relationship and then, and then you, and then next time I got on, you changed it. And I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I so. did. I did change it. And I so appreciated that message because, um, I mean, depending on who you would have said that to, right. Like they could take that, like, who are right. you to tell me yeah. what to put on my bio? Right. But yeah. it really like it, because I am so self-reflective, it made me think, and I'm like, you know what, that is is true for number one and two, like how great of it was that he was willing to tell me that and to, you know, help me on this journey that I'm on. And so I just super appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, as, as I'm telling, saying, telling the story, like, I, I feel like I'm saying it about me, like, Oh, I'm so awesome. I did this, but I'm not like, really, like I scared the crap out of myself when I did that. I was like, <laughs> that is not the type of person I am to say like, no, you're wrong. Like I usually yeah. just let people have their opinions, you know, like, and I don't, I'm, I am enthusiastic about helping people. I'm passionate about helping people. And I guess that's what I was trying to do in that moment. And I was like, man, I hope this is received the right way. And it was. And now you're on the show because of, as I got deeper into your content, I started watching your videos. I was like, she has a message that people need to hear. Like, yeah. You have the ability to change the lives of other people and to help them, to help them to learn how to love themselves. So let me ask you this. Where did this passion for helping others develop personally come from for you? Well, I think I've always just been the type to help people. I mean, I don't know if you are into the Enneagram test, if you've done that personality test, but I'm a type two, which is the helper. And so it's kind of just a part of who I am. I've always been a helpful person. I've always cared really deeply for other people. And I started on you know, you mentioned that I started a skincare business. Um, when I started that journey about two and a half years ago, that really was the start of my personal growth journey. And for a while I was doing that more behind the scenes and just working on myself. And then 
I just got to this point where I decided to start putting it out there on social media and kind of, it started as a way to help organically grow the business, honestly, like to share more about myself so people could learn who I am and to learn to, you know, know, like, and trust me. And then it kind of developed more because people were reaching out to me and saying like, Oh my gosh, I love your content. And thank you so much. Like your message really helped me today. And so then I started like getting more of a passion for the coaching side and really like helping people in that way. And it's kind of evolved and changed over time um, to where that's like what my passion is now. And so what kind, what kind of started as like business related for something completely unrelated to personal growth kind of ventured into that lane for whatever reason. (laughs) So kind of crazy. So, so what about this passion you have is so rewarding? Like how does it, how does it benefit you by helping other people? I think it's just, you know, that feeling of feeling like you have an impact, like you matter because you're making a difference in people's lives. Um, I think to some extent, we all kind of have this innate desire to want to be useful and for our lives to have a deeper meaning than just like eating, sleeping and pooping, right? (laughs) Like we want our lives to mean something. And I think that desire is in our hearts for a reason. And so um, I think that that's kind of where it all stems from. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's empathy, sympathy versus empathy, right? Yeah. And then that kind of devolves into compassion. And, right. and so the way I see you is I see you as a very compassionate person where you're Thank compelled you. to help people. Yes. And so let's talk a little bit about compassion. What does compa- the word compassion mean to you and what does it look like when you see it in someone? Well, I think to be com- like, to me, compassion and empathy, like kind of go hand in hand. I think, um, you know, when you're empathetic to someone, you really can put yourself in their shoes and kind of feel what they're feeling in whatever situation it is that they're going through. And so I think that, you know, to be compassionate, like you have to have empathy, they kind of Mm -hmm. go hand in hand. And I think it looks like the desire to kind of like walk hand in hand with people and really take the time to be an empathetic listener. I've been learning a lot about that lately and how we just don't listen very well as humans because we're always thinking about like, what are we going to say next? We're more Mm -hmm. concerned about what we're going to say next than what the other person, you know, is actually saying. And so I think a lot of it has to do with learning to truly listen to other people and figure out like why you're in their life. I think the people that cross our paths cross our paths for reasons. I, you know, think that this podcast is happening for a reason. I think you found my content for a reason. I think all of that um, lined up in the way that it did, it did for a reason. And so I think that um, it all kind of goes together. Does that like, did that answer your question? <laughs> no, it totally did. I feel it like makes... I kind of took that a different No, track. no, it's, that it was a great answer actually. Yeah. I, we, I don't believe in coincidences. I'll put it that way. Um, and I, I agree that things happen for a reason, but we have to be looking for what that reason is and why that situation has come about as well as um, what we're supposed to do in that situation when we cross paths with someone. We got to be listening yes, for that. We, li- listening to that small voice in our head, it says like, tells you, those promptings, wherever you get, you know, whatever you want to call them, those gut feelings. Yeah. Uh, And I think that requires a certain sense of self-awareness, which so many people, you know, you're just on the hamster wheel of life, right? Like, unless you are consciously really sitting in those moments and looking for that and paying attention to that, you are going to miss all of those shoulder taps and all of those signs. And so I think that that requires um, a lot of intention to really um, pay attention and to start, you know, noticing when those opportunities come into your life. So with that being said, how do we live our lives intently? How do you live with intention? 
Well, I think that a lot of times people are living their lives reactively and they're just, you know, on the hamster wheel and just kind of like reacting as things are thrown their way. And I think, I think to be intentional, you have to be purposeful with your moments. And I think, you know, when your child says something, for instance, that maybe triggers you and you get that feeling of like, I just want to like yell at them or scold them or whatever it happens to be. I think like kind of taking a deep breath and spending, you know, the 20 seconds or whatever it takes to sit in your head a little bit and say like, why did that trigger that in me? Like, why am I feeling anger right now? Because a hundred percent of the time your response has to do with you, not the other person. (laughs) And so you have to like ask yourself why, why is them disrespecting me or whatever it happens to be? Why is that triggering me right now? And then ask yourself, like sit in that for a second and then ask yourself, okay, like what is my intention here? How, like what kind of mother do I want to come across as right now? Um, And then choosing to kind of step into that version of your best self. Um, And I think, you know, that takes practice that, I mean, I fail every single day at this, but that's something that I constantly try to tell myself is to, you know, think a little bit before you act and to kind of sit in and step into that person that you want to be. I love that answer. It reminds me of something Buddha said. He said, we don't react to what's happening to us. We react to our perception of what is happening to us. And so if we are taking that time to sit and say, is my perception correct or do I need to have a different perspective? Uh, We're able to get down to why we're reacting the certain way that we are or why we're not reacting. And I think think that's part of how we live intently. For sure. And that, uh, that honestly, that reminds me of something that I was kind of smacked in the face with recently is that, um, we tell ourselves so many stories and I'm learning now to more like sit in the truth because these stories that we create in our heads, you know, they're perceptions, they're not reality. And those perceptions a lot of times create stress and worry and anxiety and all these things in our lives. Um, when, if we were to just ask ourselves what's true and sit in that and design our reactions around that we are in such a healthier place. Like, let's say, you know, your kid back talks you in your head, you know, you're creating this story of, Oh my gosh, they're so disrespectful and how dare they. And they must think I'm a horrible mom. They have no respect for me. You know, you're creating this story when if you sit in that and ask yourself like, okay, what do I know to be true? What I know to be true right now is that my child chose a not very nice tone of voice in that one sentence, right? (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. all this other stuff is what we're making up in our head. And so um, when we choose to sit in the truth and then react to the truth instead of our perception and our story, we end up um, living a much more peaceful life (laughs) for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So that reminds me of something someone said. It might have been, I can't remember who said this, and I think I might have had him on the show, and it just hasn't aired yet. My mind just drawn a blink. But they said, um, we are the stories that we tell ourselves. And so what those stories are, what I've learned, and how I've come to define them is that that's shame. So we believe the lies, they're lies, right? If yeah. We create these stories in our head, which are lies, because it's not the truth. Uh, because it's our perception of what's going on and, and just your perception is we perceive our perception to be reality. Right. That's, but it's not always the truth. It's like what Buddha said. And, and so if, if we can get away from what these, these stories or what shame is telling us, mm-hmm. then we can get down to the bottom. So how, well, how would you, would you define shame? What is shame to you? Um, well, my, my favorite definition of shame is from Brene Brown. Um, and she describes it as an intensely painful feeling of believing that we are flawed and unworthy of acceptance or belonging. And so that's, 
that's how I see it. And I think we all have that to some degree because none of us have been raised in a perfect world and a perfect environment. And as I've kind of dug into the psychology side of personal growth recently, I'm realizing we all have like damage from our childhood, regardless of how perfect, quote unquote, perfect of a family you came from. We all had experiences that shaped us in a negative way in some way, shape or form. And so I think we all carry a little bit of that shame, like into adulthood. And so, um, I think all, I think everybody struggles with that. It's just a matter of you know, how you choose to deal with those feelings of shame, I guess. Yeah. And if you first, you have to recognize what, what it is, is it truth or yes. is it shame? Yeah. So what yes. are some of the lies that shame has told you, you believe that you, well, um, I try, I try not to believe the lies because I think it, at this point, I'm fairly good at recognizing the fact that they're lies, but those thoughts do regularly, you know, come to my head. One of them example is this podcast. When you asked me to do this, like my initial thought was like, who am I? Like, I'm just a stay at home mom with a skincare business who likes personal growth. (laughs) Like those that just word, by the way, like I hate that word and I'm trying to remove it from my (laughs) from my vocabulary because it limits us so, so much when mm-hmm. we think of ourselves as just something. Um, that totally holds us back from who we are supposed to be. And the reality is no one is just anything. We put those limits, you know, on ourselves. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of probably the biggest thing is holding, holding myself back in feeling that I'm defined by my role as a wife and a mom and a business owner and just, you know, at this stage in my life feeling like, is it really possible for me to do more? Like I feel this calling on my heart to do more, but can I really do it? You know, more of like those like self doubt feelings, I guess. Yeah. So we put labels on ourselves Yeah, and we put labels on other people too. And eventually we, those labels that we give ourselves or others give us, we start to believe. Yes. And and I think labels can be dangerous because that that will stunt your growth or even um, digress. You'll digress by having labels on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think too, like we have to start labeling ourselves in more positive ways. Um, I listened to a podcast the other week about, validating yourself. And it was talking about how so many of us need to become better at self-validating because we look to everyone else to define who we are. You know, we wait for someone else to tell us we're pretty or we're smart or whatever it is. And then we take how other people labeled us and assign that to ourselves. And so she was talking about how we need to be better about like, basically patting ourselves on the back for what we do and what we do well. Like every day I show up at the bus stop and pick my kids up. Like, man, I'm responsible. Like good for me. (laughs) Like I fed my kids and my husband dinner tonight. Like I am so compassionate to feed my family every night selflessly, you know, whatever it happens to be like, we should be kind of our own greatest cheerleader in giving ourselves credit for, what we actually do and not waiting for other people to tell us what we are. Yeah. When we're only looking for when our self-worth is dependent on external validation, we're never happy because then we're always trying to change who we actually are so that we can get that validation. And one thing I want to point out is if you make your kids dinner, um, every night, like a responsible parent does that deserves a pat on the back because nobody told me that finding something for my kids to eat every single night was going to be the bane of my existence. When I became <laughs> right. Like that's like one of the hardest things I do on a daily basis. My wife and I, like, as soon as I get home from work, she'd be like, what are we doing for dinner? I'm like, I, uh, I was really hoping you had something planned. And she's like, I was thinking the same oh. thing. And then we, you know, just trying to find something that they'll eat and that they like. like that's oh, yeah. that's a but, tough you know, thing we, to do, right? 
It totally is. And when you, you know, work from home or stay at home parent or whatever, I mean, I told my husband the other day, I said, I feel that the kids had all these snow days, like all at one time. And I said, I feel like all I do is feed people <laughs> like all day long. I want a snack. I want a snack. I want a snack. And then he walks in and it's like, what's for dinner? Oh my goodness. All I do is feed people all day long. So, yeah. <laughs> it's snacks. So I don't know if you like, we shop at Costco a lot. And, um, so we went and they had this big, huge bag of like, uh, munchies. And so it's got like Cheetos and pretzels oh, and I sun love chips. Munchies. Love them. Right. And so I bought them. And I was like, man, I'm going to have a good time for the next week. Like anytime I want a snack, there's going to be something there. Right. So this was like two nights ago. And I can't, I went downstairs last night and I was like, got munchies on my mind. I want the munchies. <laughs> and I opened up the bag and all that was left of this like three pound bag were crumbs and i was like are you freaking kidding me yeah right, and so and so that i sat in the moment i was like okay why is this upsetting me so much like why am i so mad like i know my kids are going to eat these until they're gone that's why we <laughs> that's why we like put all the snacks up above where the kids can't reach them even my wife can't reach them and she's got to get a chair to get them. my wife's got to get a chair to get them because otherwise they just they're gone and yeah. so I was thinking, I was like, why is that so frustrating to me? And so I started to, to just unpack that a little bit. And I thought, well, I feel like a bunch of money was just wasted. Um, I was really looking forward to that. And then it hit me like my expectation was I had a, I had a, an expectation that wasn't being met. I was expecting uh -huh. my kids to eat them slowly and have it last a week. But in reality, as I sat there in that truth in that moment and, and quit telling myself the story of why it was gone, like you're talking about, yeah. I realized that's not realistic to expect of my kids. My kids are going to eat those things till they're gone. As long as yeah. they're out, they're going to eat them. And if their friends come over, they're gone regardless. Yeah. And so having realistic expectations, I think is, or if we do have an expectation too, making it known. Uh, yeah. When, when those expectations aren't, aren't met, that's when we really get mad. That's why. We yeah. Get mad. And I think one thing that I tell myself all the time and try and remind myself of is to not have expectations and to replace expectations with appreciation. Because when you, when you have expectations nine times out of 10, they're not going to be met. <laughs> right. Unless right. you said you verbalize those. Right. And so we end up like expecting these things. And then when they don't happen, we are disappointed. And if you don't have expectations, you just appreciate when things, you know, go the way that you wanted, then you wind up being a lot happier. And so I try and remember that because I'm someone like, I'm that person who like expects Christmas and all these holidays to go perfectly. And then when someone like the kids start fighting, I'm like, Oh, it's ruined because they're fighting, you know? And so like, I tend to have really high expectations. And so that's something I've really had to work on is replacing the expectations with appreciation. Uh, yeah, that's great. And I, I think if we have expectations and we don't make them known, um, what that is called is entitlement. Right. Because we're entitled, we're, we're, we expect something to happen and we're entitled to receive it without being requesting it. And even yeah. when we, even when we set an expectation with someone, uh, they don't have to agree to it. Uh, right. And, and even if they agree to it and then go back on it, um, yeah, well, we have a right to be upset, but then we still have to choose how we, how we react to that emotional disappointment that we're having. Is that yes. going to destroy us? Is it going to destroy a relationship? Are we going to yell? Are we going to, you know, throw a temper tantrum? Because believe it or not, adults throw temper tantrums. They just look different than kids. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think that that's how we can center ourselves. That's how we can learn to love ourselves and accept ourselves for who we are. That's how we can begin to grow individually. And what are your thoughts yeah. on that? I think that is very, very true. I agree a hundred percent. So when it comes to personal development, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, so I have a really good friend of mine named Proline who she gives me advice all of the time. She's basically like my life coach. And one time she told me, she was like, Carrie, stop resisting. 
effing face plant into your life. And I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> that is like such a great piece of advice because I think we all like resist things to a certain extent. And this is something that I, um, I personally really struggled with in like my battle with anxiety is I want things to be a certain way. I want to be able to control things. I want, you know, my life to look a certain way. And when things are like thrown at me that, um, aren't on the quote unquote plan, it kind of throws me for a loop. And she was telling me this one day because she was like, you resist like the journey you're fighting against the journey that you're supposed to be on. Like stop fighting it and friggin' face play it into it. And so I actually like, I wrote it on post it and I had it on my whiteboard behind me for a long time because it was just a great reminder. Like just let go, like stop fighting it. Just face plant, face plant into your life. I loved it. That's great. That is great. Just effing face plant <laughs> into your life. Yes. And like, I think you're, that means that you're letting go of expectations of how things are going to happen yeah. and just let it happen. And when it does, it's like kind of like learning how to swim when you, for the first time you jump in the deep end, right? Like, yeah. You'll figure it out. You'll be fine. And then you might realize like, actually you can touch the bottom, you know, when you jump in and it's yeah. not, it's not as hard as you think that it actually is going to be. So no, I really like that. Flopping is not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to do it. Yeah. Just don't do a belly flop because that hurts. Belly flops hurt. <laughs> what does it mean to be resilient and how do you show up in a resilient way in your life? I think being resilient means that you grow through your failures. You don't let um, your failures hold you back or keep you down. You kind of use them as fuel to propel you forward. And I think it's really like just a mindset shift where you stop seeing the struggles as something that's like not supposed to be in your life. I think we all have this unrealistic expectation that life is supposed to be easy and it's supposed to be smooth and things are just supposed to like go greatly. And if we're depressed or we're sad or we're angry or, you know, we have any kind of negative anything, we think that that's abnormal. And I think that when you switch that mindset to expecting the hiccups in the road and looking at them as something that's supposed to grow you into the person that you're supposed to be. Um, I think that gives a sense of resiliency to your life is just that mindset shift for sure. Uh, no, I really like that. That Using your hardship as a way to grow rather than exactly. letting it define you. Exactly. Well, I have just have one last question for you. Okay. Um, and uh, more serious in nature and more personal. And I, okay. I feel like it's really important for all of our listeners to hear your opinion on, on Bigfoot. <laughs> on Bigfoot. Well, um, here's what I'll say since I like to sit in the truth, Preston. <laughs> I will tell you, I think people have seen something. And that's all that we know to be true. That's all we know to be true. Anything else is a story. Yeah. You know what? That's actually there's my response to, to that question is people are seeing something. I don't know what it is, but I believe they are seeing something. Yeah. And it could be different. Like one person, maybe they really did see something supernatural. You know, one person, maybe they saw someone dressed in a costume. One person, maybe they saw a bear in the woods. You know, I don't think it's necessarily the same thing that everyone is seeing. It just happens that they are seeing something in around the same location. <laughs> That's all we know to be yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, no. So I do have one. I like your answer to that. And, but I do have one or have one last question for you. And it is actually probably the most serious question I ask everyone. Okay. That is this. Yes. If in the next 30 seconds, whatever you said would be heard and understood by every single person on the earth, what would you say? Ooh. Okay. That's a lot of pressure. Um, I would tell people don't stop growing. 
take on the identity of a lifelong learner and realize that the work you're putting in now to grow yourself, you may not see for a while. Um, in the book, Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about an ice cube. He uses this as an example where an ice cube starts out, you know, let's say it's starting out at 26 degrees and you're slowly applying heat to it. You will notice no change until that ice cube hits 32 degrees and it starts to melt. But that ice would have never started melting if you hadn't put in the work from degrees 26 up until that 32 point. And one of my favorite quotes from him is that breakthrough moments are often the result of many previous actions, which build up the potential required to unleash major change. And I think a lot of times when you're on a personal growth journey, you feel like what you're doing isn't working, but that's because you're in that under 32 degrees right now. And eventually you will get to the point where you have that breakthrough and you start to see the change, but people around you, they're only going to see the change. They're not going to see all that work that you put in up until that melting point. And so, um, I think that's what I would say to people because I think the world would be a much better place if everyone was growing themselves into the person that they were designed by God to be. And so I think that's where world change comes from is individual changing for the better. That was an incredibly powerful answer. Um, but you went over 30 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't edit no. it out. It's all good. <laughs> no, I know. That's why I was like, just keep talking. This is great. I love that. Yes. Because our personal development, uh, it starts building a foundation before anyone you start to see what you're actually doing and, Absolutely. and, and nobody sees the work that you're putting in and exactly. it's hard and it's at the times it's painful. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for your time today. I've really enjoyed our conversation and I know someone somewhere is going to listen to this and you're going to change their life. And you have such a natural gift and ability and it's wonderful to see you using those talents that you have, those God-given talents that you have to bless the lives of other people and to make a difference in the world for good. So thank you for so much for being here. Thank you, Preston. I seriously very appreciate those kind words. And um, I'm really thankful and blessed to have the opportunity to be on this podcast. I think that you're doing amazing things with it. And I'm just happy to have the opportunity to be a part of it. Well, thanks. And you know, in the future, if, if uh, we'll have to have you on again, I, yeah, I can see. Absolutely. I'm I sure we, we probably only got to maybe through 10% of the message you have <laughs> that you're able to share. And so <laughs> in the near future, we'll have you on again. That sounds great. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Hey guys, be sure to follow the mental mentality podcast on social media. And as always, if you find value in the show, please leave a review and rate us five stars on Apple podcasts. But more importantly, Share this podcast with someone you know who would benefit from the messages from the guests on each episode. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Metal Mentality.